Hello. I'm Mark Webber. And I'm delighted to be introducing this episode of Gareth Jones on Speed. Mark, are you sure you're all right to do this? Yeah. Have you got a broken shoulder? No. Hello, welcome to Gareth Jones on Speed. He's Richard. Hello. He's Zog. Hello. I'm Gareth. And you lot are wonderful, because apart from putting this little podcast at the top position for a British podcast in the iTunes automotive section, you've been writing to us, so thank you for that. And the stuff that you've been writing is great. Suggestions for things that we should be talking about, right? Lotus Cars, someone says, well, we did that in the last show. Thank you very much. Uh, who was is this that? the last show where I said that I hated all comments on the internet? Yeah. I should have explained mm. I didn't mean people who write in. <laughs> the page for this show. It's a more carefully I, selected because, group. Well, yeah, because yeah. our listeners are very all, knowledgeable, uh, bright, fascinating, sexy people. Yeah. Here's a beauty from Serious Physics Loz. Odd cars that you've seen on the road, and having seen a Dacia Logan van on the road on Sunday, that would be an interesting topic. I saw lots of Dacia Logan estates when I was in France. They're unbelievably long cars. I really like the proportions on them, though, because they've got a very long wheelbase within a long car. So it's a long a bit, car. Bit, slightly unusual, but rather handsome mm. in a weird way. I saw a matte black X6 and a matte black Mini. Both within two miles of this house. Oh, do you know, but this s- matte black thing, because I drive around Primrose Hill and, and Maida Vale and places, sometimes on my way across to West London, there's a lot of matte black Range Rovers. I saw a matte black Bentley Arnage, mm-hmm. and it's just, I mean, there's no need for that. Um, yeah, I, these I are think- all aftermarket, but now BMW are doing matte grey on the M3, uh, right. Mercedes are doing some matte colours. They're doing matte black Special Edition Fiat 500, which does look very cute. However, all of these cars, if you read the small print, usually the warranty won't honour the paint as it normally would because mm. it is so sensitive to the Fiat one is brilliant it actually says on their website this special edition 500 only being sold over the internet and it says do not park it under trees and clean <laughs> insects and bird poo and all the stuff off instantly because it will damage the finish well that's so that's an important and you can't send them through a car wash been... and you're not supposed to polish them too hard bird mm. poo is something that I always avoid on all my cars because bird poo yeah. will affect any paint on a car a mat you can see yeah, it just staining yeah. oh, like I a bit of toothpaste on your favourite jacket because this is why it's oh. taken so long there have been Matt Motor Show concepts for years, and the problem has always been that as soon as you wash it and give it a little rub, you're going to rub your matte car shiny again. The latest ones, there's two ways of doing it. The Ford Focus RS500, which is matte black, that uses a film over a metallic black car. Ah. But the BMW Mercedes system is actually a lacquer that's sprayed on, so you can't even have the film taken off and replaced. Mm. You know, you have to just look after it. The complete reverse of this, of course, is I've seen a few matte black vehicles around recently, but I've also seen a couple of insanely glossy, shiny, white, obviously just imported from somewhere in the Middle East, cars tooling around Knightsbridge. Yeah. You've seen like, the Veyron? Veyron yeah, there, yeah, there was I've a Veyron it. and one of the Mercedes Gullwings. You didn't uh, see the driver driving. in the Veyron, did you? I didn't, know. It looked like a 14-year-old the... boy. <laughs> where I saw it. I oh, swear. really? Oh. Was it one of you guys was telling me about the Porsche 911 GT3 RS in bright orange that was always seen around Knightsbridge, but driven by a sort of 60-something... Blog. Chinese lady. Oh, chi- I really know it wasn't us. I, I know a chap who drives an orange 911 GT3. Dave Pickles. The chap we met at yeah. Le Mans, who we filmed, and that, this will appear on the Auto Express website soon. Ah. But it's not he's not a Chinese not lady. No, no, he's a Yorkshire blog. He's from Wakefield, um, I think. Uh, do you know there's a matte black car near me, though? But brilliantly, it's a Triumph Acclaim. And, um, <laughs> and it uses neither a uh, sophisticated lacquer system nor a matte film. He's used blackboard paint. I I used to have a bicycle that I decided should be matte black. I thought it would look better if it was matte black. This was 20 years ago. So I sprayed it with whatever matte black paint I could find, and it looked fantastic for about a week. Yeah. And then as fingerprints and little yeah, chips yeah. and dirt accumulated on it, at least that kind of matte black paint finish, there is no way of keeping it looking good other than respraying it every week. 
Yeah. My biggest worry if I painted my car with blackboard paint is that one day you'd come back and find that someone had done a chalk <laughs> penis or <laughs> written, <laughs> written a rude word on it. And, and if the, that happened, I would always investigate local teachers first because who else has <laughs> access to chalk? <laughs> and, and, and the more this year in um, Arnage, was Arnage, Arnage, yeah, Arnage yeah. there was somebody with an early model VW Golf mm. had painted the, of course, completely flat bonnet yeah, yeah. in blackboard paint and was yeah. inviting passers-by mm. yeah. to contribute to the, uh, to the artwork that. on the bonnet. Um, I thought that was a fantastic no, it's good, isn't it? It's very inclusive. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of like community, community art projects. Someone was doing it at the uh, a good one. fabulous Pride of Longbridge Festival where basically a lot of people with old Rovers and Austins and things meet in the park. Isn't there the a tartan? What? Pride of Longbridge. What tartan's that? Oh, it's the Pride of Longbridge. Yeah. <laughs> What part of Birmingham are you from? <laughs> the um, Scottish part. Oh, yeah, the, <laughs> Little Scotland. Um, so, yeah, someone had got a, an old Rover 400 estate and done the whole thing in blackboard paint and were inviting people to write on it. It was really funny. Of course, everyone was writing swear words and stuff. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um, but the question was, what uh, unusual cars you've seen yeah. recently? I, well, I, I think we've covered it. Black cars are certainly black, unusual. Black they promote uh, uh, a response. I was going to say also things you don't see every day, Lada Neva, but is my, one of my neighbours has a Lada oh. Neva. And every time I see it, which is basically every day, I go, oh, Look at Lada Neva. <laughs> it's, it's, I love those things. There's a Lynx Eventa just up the road, which oh, yeah. frankly uh, gives me a bit of a rush to my trousers every time I drive. Always will. So, uh, next question. Oh, okay, next guess? question. If any of you asks Sosh Dragon, if any of us were chosen as the successor to Bernie Ecclestone, what would be the first thing that you'd do in Formula One? I know what I'd do. Open up the engine rigs. Yes. Mm. And then I, well, actually, the first thing I do is take all my money and throw it onto the bed and roll around it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> naked. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm assuming yeah. I get Bernie's money as well as his. Oh job, yeah, right. I, but you also get his haircut and height. What? It's a trade-off. Come on, you come on. I don't Dave. think I want the job. Every I cloud. I'm, I'm close enough <laughs> to Bernie's cloud. height already. Every I have no problem with that. Uh, Every silver lining is a cloud. Sorry, what were you saying? I was, was going to say, I'm close enough to Bernie's height already, so I'm happy enough with that. No problem there. <laughs> yeah. It might um, be a positive increase for you, Zach. You never know. <laughs> Ooh, <hurtful. laughs> How I know him well enough to say that. He's tiny, because I met him at the British Grand Prix. He's microscopic. <laughs> So I think he stands closer to you so that he tricks you into thinking he's slightly taller uh, using well, perspective. Also because I can shiv you under the ribs if you get on his nerves <laughs> too much. Do you know what I do? Go I on. have a Welsh F1 race, the Welsh Grand Prix. I mean it. I think you're abusing your power. Zog's going to open the up the point? engine regs, furthering yeah. technical accomplishment and making the racing more interesting. You just want to have a race in Abergavenny. Yeah. No, yeah, well, ah, no. What's the point of being the boss if you can't indulge exactly. your wish? That's <laughs> really, you know, it's great I'm being, being the king. I'm being boring and techie. Gareth's being Welsh. It's great. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if I said to you my reasoning was not to have a race in Abergavenny, but to have an F1 race on the Great Orm in Llandidno. Do you remember the Lombard RAC rally going around the outside of the Great Orm in the 80s and the 70s? This would basically be old-style Nordschleifer racing, yeah. but in Wales. With modern F1 cars. And the climb up the Great Orm, which, if you don't know, is this wonderful mountain promontory that juts out into the Irish Sea from Llandidno in North Wales. It is so beautiful. Monaco might look great with these gorgeous cars driving around what is effectively a bloody 1970s high-rise beach. Mm. Really, that's all it is. This would be glorious as the cars pull negative G coming over the top and taking off. It would be so dramatic. That's why I'd do it. It'd just be a beautiful race. I've just thought of an even better idea than opening up the engine regs. Go on. We're always hearing that, you know, Formula One cars can drive on the ceiling if they're going fast enough. From next year, we're having qualifying upside down. Yes. Good deal. Welcome then to the start of the 2011 Formula One season. Many rule changes this year. There's a new tyre supplier, movable rear aerodynamic devices, and of course the requirement that cars run upside down. So, here we go. All the lights are out, and they're off into the first corner, onto the spiral ramp, across onto the ceiling. Oh dear! Oh no! Oh! Well, that hasn't worked out at all. Oh, that is a real mess. Well, this is probably why there should be more pre-season testing. Yes, Petrol! We got a Jones on speed! Right, do you want to play a game? Oh, so I've, yeah. got, I've got a game for you. Oh, the yeah. last game I played with you... 
I can't describe how I felt afterwards here. So it's not one of those games. Yeah, again, we'll be releasing it? the video unless the money yeah. turns up. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bit weird. Okay. Um, <laughs> you've thrown me off, not, off kilter now. Sure. Right, anyway, so... What's um, the game? What's the game? Well, uh, thankfully, uh, for all of us, it involves cars. Hooray! It's, some, it's something that occurred to me the other day. You know, we try and keep abreast of all that's going on in the new car world and stuff like that, but it's difficult to sort of... Once a car's launched and there's been a big fanfare, well, that's it. You sort of then lose track a mm-hmm. little bit. What I'm getting at is there's some cars where you see them in a showroom or something, you go, what, they're still selling that? I didn't know that. So, this is the game. I've got Uh a list of seven cars. And my question to you two is, can you still buy a brand new one of these (laughs) in the UK? In the UK. And that's the the proviso, okay. In the UK. Are you going to give us any hints of how many are on sale and how many are not? I'm going to tell you the answers, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But But not before. Not before, okay. I'm going to go one at a time. So, we're going to start with... The Alfa Romeo GT. Remember that? Coupe? Uh, yeah. Uh, Not the Brera. It came yeah, yeah. before it, that. I, I thought it came after the Brera. That no, was the bonkers did, thing about it. It did come it. before it, but not that long before. I would say, I'm going to say that's still on sale. Yeah, I would I'm say, say it's still yes. on sale as well, yeah. I'm going to give you both a point, but only just. Ah. Because here's the thing. Technically, production, I think, has finished, but it's still on Alfa Romeo's website. <laughs> it's still on Alfa Romeo's Italian website, ah. and they're advertising a special edition to celebrate 100 years of Alfa, which I'm guessing is essentially a run-out model. And also, you did say on sale. You didn't say still yes, produced. Exactly. Right. Yes, exactly. on sale. You know, so if you go to your local Alfa showroom and say, I would like to buy an Alfa Romeo GT Coupe, please, the correct response from them would be, you are mental. Get a Brera. <laughs> <laughs> But if they've got one around the oh, back, yeah. I'd imagine they'd they say, what? I mean, uh, yes, of course. Uh, but knowing the way alpha sales work, they've probably got four years of those still <laughs> left to be on sale for the next four years. They're all rotting. Yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, I thought it was the 70s there for a moment. Yeah. Um, so, the next one, the Ford Fusion. Do you remember the Ford Fusion? Oh, if you're listening in America, yeah. not the, the saloon that you have over yeah. there, the sedan. It, this is um, uh, a car that was like a sort of taller Fiesta and seemingly had no point whatsoever. It's a sort of 4x4 mm. Fiesta estate that Not isn't 4x4. Four four, four, no, no, that isn't 4x4. Four yeah. four. That's the point okay. I'm trying to make. I think there's lots of reasons. I know a lot of people hate the Ford Fusion. Uh, honestly, people say, what's the point of that car? I absolutely believe that's a point for that car so that people over the age of 60 can buy a Ford that they can get in and out of easily. Yes, that is true. I, I mean it, I mean it. And I gather okay, you see, it you've actually... quite popular amongst yeah. the elderly. Are they yeah. still making okay. it? Well, you've actually made a serious Well, can you go into own. a Ford dealer uh, and you buy one? Oh. OK, I have no idea, so I'm going to say no, because just on a kind of reverting to the mean, I said, yeah, you know, last one was yes, so I'm, I'm saying no on a coin flip. I'm going to reason it out in real time. The thing is, I never noticed them when they were new. Exactly. There's no yeah. chance I'm going to they've, notice them now. Based on the old Fiesta. As I say, they've changed the Fiesta platform, but there again, in the past, Ford have got a history of keeping old Fiesta platforms going for a long time, even when new models have brought in. Where was it built? Must have been built in Valencia. No, uh, built in Cologne. Was it built in Cologne? Mm. The Fusion was built in Cologne. Yes, surprising. Bonkers. Yes. Well, in that case, yeah, I reckon they're still making it. You can still buy it. A point to Mr Jones, they are. Oh! <laughs> if it was Valencia, I said no. Staggering. Yeah. I was going to say you were overthinking it, but apparently not. Yeah. You were absolutely All right, right, next one. This is the one that set me thinking, because it's really obscure. The, the VW Fox, the replacement for the Lupo, made in South America, exceptionally boring car. Very boring. And, you know, so and, and, boring and, uh, that it might be on sale still, and we haven't noticed. That's a stealth Ooh. car, the true stealth car. <laughs> Interesting. Lupo looks like, when are they going to finish that car? Yes. So if they just got the front end done. They, oh, I forgot to do the back mm. end, right? The Fox... Oh, it just seems like it's a Polo Classic, you know. Do you remember the Polo Classic? What a bland car that mm. is. The Fox was so bland. I agree with Zog. I think it's so bland they're still yeah. making it and selling it and we haven't noticed because we're so. not interested in it. They are. <sighs> it is available still in the UK. Well done, Z. Nice one. <clears throat> nice work. Next one. Jaguar X-Type. Can you still buy a new one of those in the UK? <sighs> Well, hang on, they've got 12 years unsold uh, types, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I'm but, saying, but, I haven't but, researched this that thoroughly. There could be an airfield full of them, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm not aware either way, so... The thing is, Jaguars, they seem to have moved quite quickly in recent years, I think. They haven't yeah. been hanging around. I think they might have... I think they might have canned it. I think no. I, think, I don't think you can buy it anymore. The last update I remember for that car 
was when it got is it the 2.2 diesel engine yeah and then, the they put, and then they put an auto box on it they gave it different bumpers and it looked mm. a little bit better and mm. suddenly you started to see lots of them around i think they did some kind of massive fleet deal with some or with a rental company i remember mm. also journalists finally writing this is the car it should have always been it finally got there because when it first came out it certainly yeah, yeah. wasn't and that wasn't that long ago so you know what I reckon they're still building them in Liverpool. They're still putting them together at Hale Woods, I reckon. I reckon they are, yeah. And Zog, you're ah, watching. Building them as well as selling. I'm going to stick with my earlier I'm going to stick, I'm going to stick with my earlier answer. I'm not going to be... I think I'm going to just for All the right, sake well, of uh, consistency... I have to tell you that... Point Zog. <laughs> Production ended on the 16th of December, 2009. No, 12 I mean, there, there, there might be one hanging out around the back of your local Jag garage, but I think that Ian Callum may have personally gone round there <laughs> and crushed it. Um, <laughs> last of the old school National Trust style Jags. So, um, oh. yeah, I'm going to move on to the Cadillac. BLS. The BLS. The no, Saab 9.3 based Built Cadillac. at Trollhattan, uh, I think. And on is the this 9-3 line. one of those vanishingly rare... Cadillacs that they actually sort of sell more than ten of in the UK over yeah. their total life. You see them around eight uh, grand for the saloon. On, but you, yeah. I wouldn't say you see them around. You see them around if you're, for example, driving past one of those car supermarkets yeah. and they're on the forecourt yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone actually buys even Arnold second-hand Clark ones. Arnold Clark always selling them. I think uh, he, he is the only person who ever bought uh, them. His dealer empire. Oh, Gareth, Arnold Clark here. We know you quite like a Cadillac and you've been fun to a Saab. In fact, you've owned one or two in the past would you be interested in a BLS is it the station wagon no it's the saloon I'll not be wanting one thank you and I think the whole universe didn't want one either no they're Which not still making it ah, but you see, conversely because nobody wanted one they probably still got, got a, a whole bunch them. that they're waiting to sell so maybe okay, when, when was it launched I think around 2005 yeah. 2006 in right. that case I, I, I think it probably doesn't matter how many they had to sell and they're still trying to sell them are we playing so, for the draw now is uh, this like yeah, yeah, point? you're level pelling well never, I've got uh, one more car to go after this so it's all oh, okay. Okay, to so play this, this for this isn't actually the uh, I'm going to say Oh, I don't know. See, my, my, my heart says no, you can't buy them, but head says yes, you can. So I reckon I'm, not because it's all too complicated for Saab and GM at the moment that they would have to have got rid of that deal. That's true, Saab. Yeah, Saab. But, but they, I say I'm no. going to say yes. I'm going to take a strategic. Going to try and take. Going like to try this. and take a lead in the uh, in the quiz here. So it's a, a game I plan. love game your plan. tactics, Sog. Um, sadly, on this occasion, they didn't pay off. <gasps> oh, um, they actually stopped making it. In August 2009, it's been oh. it's been out of production for over a year now. Again, there may be some unregistered ones somewhere in the way that there were with those um, the STS. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, the oh, STS, yeah. the big one. Yeah, there used yeah, to be yeah. like four or five of those just sat in a Vauxhall compound yes. on the way up to Luton Airport. You could always see them <laughs> just sitting there, <laughs> yes. wretched things. And then one day they all disappeared. You know what happened to them? They were sold as a job lot for pennies to a posh minicab firm in Luton. No, so uh, for several years afterwards, possibly to this day, if you live in Luton and you've seen this, get in touch because if you went out on the lash in Luton and called a posh minicab, yeah, chances Cadillac are CTS. Cadillac STS, STS yes, right. that's the big old one. <laughs> so no, but officially the Cadillac BLS is not on sale new in Britain anymore. In fact, Cadillacs aren't on sale in Britain anymore yeah, yeah. unless you want a left-hand yeah, drive right. Escalade or something. Um, final Doesn't one, matter. okay, really quickly, Fiat Chroma. <sighs> Okay, the Chroma. Now, this is the tall estate that is built on what the hell platform did they build on the Punto platform? What's bigger than the Punto? What were these? The Stilo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bigger on the uh, bigger than the Stilo, you say? Bigger than the Stilo. (laughs) Bigger. Um, was it ba- sold as anything else that would have sort of kept it going? No, mm, it's not related to no. the Palio. It's not of. Um, I saw. Where did I see one recently? The, I'm okay, uh, I, I'm <laughs> going to say yes. It is still available because Fiat don't make any big cars, so that's their only hope. I'm going to say no, partly because actually I think it probably is not on sale at all. Also because it's my only chance of levelling the scores. The, uh, my only chance is that Gareth gets this one wrong and I luck into getting this one right so by saying no. So I'm saying no. If you so get this one right, a it's a draw. Oh. Gareth, if you get this one right, yeah. you've taken the game. Oh, Lord. And I have to tell you, gentlemen... Look at your faces. <laughs> You're taking this quite seriously. We can't look at our faces. We're in them. <laughs> I'd, I'd hold up the screen to you, but I'm reading the answers off it. It's a draw. Oh, so no, no, no. 
<laughs> it is not available new in the UK, but unlike the other cars that are not available new in the UK, this one is still available in other countries new. They just deleted it from Britain because they sold like four of them. Yeah, and for a while afterwards they went... If you really want one, we'll do you on special order. Yeah. Yeah. As if anyone was. So, no, if you go to Italy, you see them as taxis and stuff. They are still available. It's had a facelift and everything. <laughs> but you cannot buy that car new in the UK anymore. And that was my brilliant Can You Buy game. A New Game. Absolutely I like that game. Brilliant game. Yeah. Thank I'm, you. Thank you, Richard. I, 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 and I'm, well done. A noble draw. OK, can you still buy the Noble M12 <laughs> if it's a noble draw? <laughs> Breaking news here on Gareth Jones on Speed. We've just heard that the controversial WikiLeaks website is to turn its focus onto Formula One with a series of previously unpublished leaks from the sport. Early indications show that amongst these are cables that prove Christian Horner definitely isn't Dutch. An email from Sebastian Vettel asking his assistant to buy him a shoulder-breaking hammer and... A police report which claims that whilst being mugged for his watch and jewellery, Bernie Eccleston somehow managed to sell his assailants an executive box at next year's Korean Grand Prix. Look, I know it's not very many weeks till Christmas now and it's getting a bit dark and cold. But cast your collective minds back to the fragmented beauty of the British and North European summer. Do you remember summer? Do you had a bit in in LA? You had a bit of warmth over there, didn't you? Recently? No, it rained. It did. It didn't rained it? for an awful lot of time. I was there. Yeah, three weeks of mostly rain. It was like sort of well, mild Manchester. In that case, you've got even more reason to think back think to summer. Thoughts. To yeah. summer in the UK. I spent the summer. I've been meaning to talk about this on the program for ages. We've kind of alluded to it several times. That I spent the summer driving around in a car. I haven't driven the latest series of it was the Land Rover Discovery 4 they mm. call it now isn't mm. it the 4 and it's got this 4 litre turbocharged diesel engine which no, was it's 3 litre of course the old one 2.5 <laughs> 2.7 thank you this is like your calendar keeping, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if you only we knew. mentioned this before. Come on, about can you explain? It, Every it's, time like, it's, like sends... live fact, it's like live sub editing and fact checking. It's just, yeah, I know, we're, we're keeping our, our prized mantle of starting to say things before we've checked. Them. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I'll go back enough, me up on this, but every time Gareth. Correction. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> that's the thing about the hello. Oh, um, every time Gareth sends Zog an email about meeting up to record this show and he always goes okay right so Tuesday the 27th and we go, well 27th is a Thursday does you mean the Thursday or the Tuesday oh uh, no the, the Tuesday I can't do the Tuesday what about the Wednesday yeah brilliant Wednesday the 30th it is <laughs> No, the 30th oh, yeah. isn't a Wednesday. And, it's just like, and we've worked it out. It's because Gareth does uh, all of his... He keeps his, his dates from a Slade 1973 calendar. So all the days and dates are out of whack. That's the only explanation that can possibly be. And, and this is the kind of thing my mother does. One of her, you know, because she's, she's, she uh, has a fantastic inclination to not throw anything away that can be reused. She's very keen on recycling. She, 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 she hates waste. So, you know, a last year's diary can easily be repurposed for this year if you just, you know, change. Some dates but, but surely you, you're using more ink and or tipex in the process. That's quite wasteful. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's better not to question. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry, guys. So, the Discovery Four with the three liter engine in it, replacing right. the previous two point seven. That's V6. right. Yes, not the, the four the liter yeah. the twin turbo <laughs> doesn't exist. Why? I'm sorry, brain out of gear. I spent some time camping, as you do in August. And reason that, that uh, the, the perfect vehicle in many ways would be a discovery. You know, it's become a sort of a tradition on the show these days that every year I get a car fit for purpose for that two weeks camping. We had that amazing Peugeot TP a couple of years ago. We had the Mercedes R-Class the year before. We've had BMW 5 Series estates. You know, trying to find the perfect camping car is good. I'm not sure that the discovery is the perfect camping car. It was a great car. By gum. By gum. 
Uh, well, and, and I mean, if I could just chuck in a quick thought, I mean, the Land Rover is one of the few 4x4s that I have kind of a bit of lingering affection for. It's, you know, because mm. it's a proper 4x4. Four four. You know, it, uh, oh, ah. it's not a boutique vehicle. No, you can Did you like the way I said OR oh, then in, in, a, in sort a sort of, of brummy way. way? Oh, in a brummy oh, way. brummy sort of way, yeah. Uh, OR, okay. oh, oh, ah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. it's funny. Do you ever uh, find yourself behind a Discovery or a Range Rover Sport, for that matter, in traffic, and you're looking at the rear axle and it appears to be almost touching the road? And I'm always baffled as to how they're so good in mud and stuff. But they they are, mm-hmm. by all accounts. I mean, even to the point, I was talking to someone who knows their, their shizzle when it comes to 4 by 4 stuff, and they said the Range Rover Sport is actually way better than it ought to be off-road. And if you put some decent tyres on it with a bit of tread rather than sort of road-biased, low-pro things, mm. it'll yomp around because it's actually quite short overhangs and stuff. Tyres are the issue. It's got the power and it's got the software and the hardware to put the power in the right wheel that's not slipping, hasn't it? It's just a matter of getting the mm. right tyre to finish the job off. But this discovery, I think the Range Rover's gone stratospheric. I think the Range Rover's moved into sort of Bentley and footballer territory. You know, it's become a super-duper exec car. Originally, when it was conceived, it wasn't conceived as that. Well, it was conceived as just a Land Rover that you wouldn't keep chickens in. It was yeah, a smart Land Rover. It still had vinyl seats yeah. and, you know, and, and rubber mats on the floor. It's yeah, sort of the, sort of wash it out with a the luxuriousisation of the mm. Range Rover sort of only really kicked in in the 80s after, well, like, 10 years as a pretty functional thing. Well, the, the current discovery, I think, has moved into... Range Rover Heartland. They should call it the Heartland. That's a good name for a Range Rover, isn't it? They were going to call it the States, Highlander, yeah. I think. That, originally, that's yeah. right, yeah, when it, it's first concept. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the problem. I mean, if you're going to use you're gonna that strap one, line, you should buy sure the Mercedes not, R-Class. Christoph Lambert. <laughs> we will sell it. I'm having a wee problem with my, my Highlander. Uh, what is it, Mr. Bevis? I don't know why it's called Bevis. It's not a particularly Scottish name. What is it, Mr. Bevis? Is, is it one of the famous uh, rust-on-the-back-door problems that they have? Oh, no, it's not that. Could it be one of the clutch problems that we've experienced over the years? Oh, no, 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 no. It's about the uh, the carpeting. What is it? Well, it's gathering. It's a Highlander oh, joke. No Come on. It's about. a Highlander joke. Tell us more about the discovery. It was floor. great. It was floor. great, but floor? I don't think it's discovery, <laughs> discovery floor. <laughs> Tell me about the floor. It was you and your carpet. It was <laughs> him. Hey, I'm look, to, I'm going it's to rescue TV's Gareth violent. from this terrible. <laughs> We've had an intervention, my <laughs> 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 Hello, Marley. Hello. I didn't laugh at the joke. <laughs> um, but did you I understand? Did laugh, you did. But I did laugh when we were in the Land Rover. Oh. And we got stuck in this really bad traffic. And suddenly, <laughs> we had to do a quick manoeuvre turning round. OK, we couldn't really do it. We were sort of stuck in traffic. And so Gareth just suddenly did a massive sort of U-turn type reverse up the bank. <laughs> True um, as it was at the HSBC really steep, bank. <laughs> <laughs> really steep grass bank right next to us. Um, I swear, and it's the truth. It is the truth. And we went round, and that we, was the funnest bit. We, Thank we, you. We were in Dorset. <laughs> Thank you, <Pete. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We were in Dorset and we came round this corner and I'm trying to make the decision which way to go into this little village. Do I go this way or that way? Traffic could be bad. Do I take the racing line here? Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly no, that. Will I be compromised I got there, my entry to the... Yep. And massive traffic. Oh, I'm committed to it. So I'm stuck in this desperately long line. What can we do about it? And I literally couldn't do a three-point turn thing. So I hoiked the steering round. And either side of this two-lane road, there was this sort of 45-degree angled bank either side. And I just put the thing over there. It just did it beautifully. And that's what you realise is the extraordinary thing about Land Rover Discoveries. They have better off-road ability, they reckon, now than the Defender. Truly, outrageously good. Uh, And Land Rover experts Mm. will say that. Yeah, the, it's better uh, than. The, the why is that? Because 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 sure, bigger engine. Fa- this engine can now put it, all that power down. Well, also it has so much more sort of software on it. When oh, okay. wheels start yeah. spinning, there's computers that will now. The the right. Defender is still very mechanical, so you know there's only so much it can do. You you have to lock the diffs yourself. In my ignorance of the details of the range, I'm thinking, well, you know, the Defender is the more honest, horny-handed yeah. son of the soil. It's mm. going to get stuck in there. Mm. And, son know, of the soil. Why that? <laughs> Whereas, you know, oh, don't watch him, he's a bit of a fan of the soil. Discovery, you know, it's just a bit more, it's a slightly more effete, you know, a slightly more, yeah, you know, yeah. airy-fairy yeah. kind of off-road. But it's but not the perfect not, camping it? car. It had electrical issues where if I even blew up the airbed using mm. the extension 12-volt socket at the back, the battery would flatten. I had really? to leave the engine running to do that. Yeah, it would drain it That's straight strange. away. Uh, which brings me, intervening again, to the worst thing about the Discovery. So I said the best thing. Yeah. And the worst thing was trying to bloody lock it and get away from it. Well, was it, <laughs> it, it, it grab you? <laughs> <laughs> because 
You were the key. Four system. by claw. Yeah. <laughs> the modern key system, like the ultra super modern key system yeah. that Richard, you probably are accustomed to by I now. I invented all the cars it. You drive. Although I don't know. Oh, do you but, mean like okay, the keyless? So, so you keep it in your this pocket. Weird key thing, and you're left to lock the car, and then you lock it. And if you're like me, you always check things. You check to lock it. But because you're there yeah, with the yeah, key, yeah. it won't lock. So then you have to walk away a bit, put the key under a bush. <laughs> walk back. <laughs> Where it sends stolen by elves. <laughs> try the car. Walk away. Yeah, I, it's, I know what you mean. It's infuriating. I, was, yeah. I had to climb up this bank into a forest, hide the key, go back down. Try <laughs> she did. I still open. The door would still open. I, I couldn't leave this expensive car to get anybody. In the middle of a field, there's no mobile phone signal. In the end, you work out that you haven't actually closed one of the doors properly, which is the reason why it isn't locking. Okay. Which brings me to quite a good point, not necessarily just about the discovery, but about this sort of locking system in general. I could have just walked away. How do you know that you've locked those cars? You check the door, you go and... You well, exactly, but if you've got the key on you, that special key on you... It will open. It will always open automatically for you. A lot yeah, of them so now, they've okay, built well, in a little delay to try and alleviate that also the key has a lock button on it so you could override it that way i think but the 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 thing that's right if you have to understand how the system works which to my mind means it's a failure you know i think one of the sort of signs of good design is that people can broadly get their heads around it straight away well and another potential problem here is i can just see given the scenario that violet has described as you're walking away from the car you blip it to lock it you hide the keys under the stone you go back to the car to check that it's locked you find that it's locked as you're then, you then walk back, you pick up the keys. <laughs> By the time you've got to the keys, you start to worry about whether somebody has picked up the keys whilst you weren't looking, yeah. unlocked the car, <laughs> replaced them with, and, yeah. and you then have to lock the car again, yeah, go yeah. back. Caught in a I cycle. don't know, I can see it, I can oh, you're see just, going just on. having to sell the car. <laughs> There's no other way. It's a vicious paranoid circle. The key thing of all the many cars we've driven recently, the key on discovery was a bit of a mind uh, worm. Mind. Yeah, breakdown. But as a car, the Discovery is the Range Rover. In fact, it even looks like the Range Rover, the way that they've done the grill these days. And Mm. if you simply set the height setting to access the lowest setting of Mm. the three, it looks exactly like a Range Rover Sport as well, the way it sits. You look at the pictures on the website, it's sitting so low, it looks frighteningly scary wonderful car has it got long to live though the discovery no it's been a bit of a disaster because it's too expensive and people don't think it's possible 50 for grand that exactly car. i believe that even land rovers sort of quietly admit that people think it's a bit basic for 50 grand i know it's got all the kit on it have... just doesn't feel like it has it felt like luxury to me and it was a fan they've postured up haven't they inside now actually i was in one uh, yeah. i got a lift in one a while ago and i hadn't realized how nice they'd made the interior on it great motorway cruiser yeah not they're the really dr- good on the motorway aren't really they? amazing and economical we've got right 25 26 miles per gallon which i think is respectable for a car of that size that form with all our stuff in it i mean you have to slow down for corners obviously in a very big way oh look not as good a drive as the r-class the r-class felt like a sports car by comparison you know i Mm. like i like that car and i know it's flawed but i still think it's a better drive but not a better ride than the discovery the end i now have land rover experience you've been driving something even bigger haven't you Yes, bigger than the Discovery, bigger, as it turns out, than Chichester (laughs) (laughs) or or New York City. What is it? Um, Tell us what it is. Connecticut. I went over to the States to work on Top Gear USA for a few weeks, and one of the guys who works on that show, a guy called Aaron, hello Aaron, decided it would be an hilarious joke to sort me out with a car. I saw him at the Paris show. He went, have you got a car in LA? And well, I'll just get a rental car. And he went, no, 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 I'll book you in a press car. It's fine, because he works in the car business over there called one of his contacts and they rang me back and went I got your car what is it uh, I'm not going to tell you you'll find out <clears throat> what he got was a Dodge Ram 3500 which is but also and this is the crucial thing which I didn't really appreciate you know pickup trucks over there big cultural thing and there are lots of different ones this was a crew cab so it means it's got back seats and four doors but then it was a long bed it means that the pickup truck bed it's is longer, longer, longer so as you'd expect how long well, was it do you know how long it was um, you know the M1 <laughs> yeah, a bit longer than that. Longer than the um, M1. I mean, it's basically unbelievable. It's basically I've got some, some pictures. Kind of I'll, I'll, we'll maybe put a picture on the website or something because it was. Yeah. I mean, just comically massive to the point where it wouldn't fit properly in an American parking space, which generally, <laughs> unless they have compact written on them, they are bigger than a European parking space because a lot of cars there are or were bigger. It was ridiculous. It was also a manual transmission. You're kidding with me. With a six point 
one litre Cummins diesel engine in it. Um, oh, it had a diesel engine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It and I truck. picked this up at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night at LAX Airport from the valet sort of car park there. But valet doesn't mean a man brings you your car. You just give him a ticket, he gives you your keys, and then points you to it. And in this case, he pointed me to it, and it was just over there. And he went, normally we park these upstairs, but we couldn't get that up there. Because <laughs> it's too big. And then I tried to sort of squeeze it out through the barriers and put my ticket in. And you could hear the tyres going, Aah! against the curbs, both it, sides, yeah. Where is it? And then I had to find my way out from LAX and across town to Burbank, where my hotel was for the night. And it was dark, I was tired, I was jet-lagged. Not a relaxing what drive. What you really want to drive is an HGV that you have completely unfamiliar yeah, with. Yeah, and that's my biggest fit, because basically that's the thing, the only thing I've driven that's that size in this country is a seven and a half tonne truck. Yeah. Seriously, it was massive. And I had this great fear, not only that I would take something out as I drove along blearily a trying to find a way. station, maybe. Exactly. I was going to take out, I don't know, one of the Hollywood Hills, but also that I wouldn't <laughs> even notice that I'd yeah. done it. And I'd wake up the next morning and there'd be a police officer at the door and sir, where were you last night? And, um, yeah, it'd be nice one of those so, four lads in a runaway tank. You know, yeah, so exactly. Two, Beverly Hills are missing, sir. Can yeah, we exactly. check the back of your truck? <laughs> it was the Baldwin brothers down here. <laughs> <laughs> it was comical. And I had that for a week. And, but and crucially, this, when you got out of it, yes. were you able to be aware whether you had Locked it or not? <laughs> uh, yeah, it had old-fashioned, uh, old-fashioned clip. Yes, it was That's definitely really lockable. Useful. Who's um, going to nick something like that? Well, I mean, well, I think the thing is because you look at it and you'd go, oh, "There's an odds-on chance the person who drives that owns a gun," so you'd probably leave well alone. Yeah, and, and probably yeah. owns a gang as well. Yes, some, exactly. Well, no, it's not yeah. really. Did it have a double rear axle? No, no, it didn't. It didn't. He, uh, Aaron tried to book me what they call a Julie. But a the, uh, Julie. the Julie was out, so he got me the singly. And um, <laughs> but the other thing is, it, it's normal running; it's rear wheel drive, right? Now it's got yeah. a grunty old diesel engine in it, and it's a manual box, it's starting everywhere in second because it's designed to haul ass. And when it rained, I was coming across an intersection. The back end, the back wheels are spinning, and I felt it go a little bit, sort Yay. of just step out of line. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> how embarrassing would it be to find myself spinning this thing? Because basically, that's it. It would be a Universal Studios, Disneyland, gone. <laughs> the Queen Mary, Wiped out. knocked yeah. over yeah. by this behemoth. <laughs> It was hysterical. Did so, you enjoy it? I did sort of enjoy yeah, it, but everywhere, everyone that I work with would go, is that your truck? And I'd be like, yeah, it's not mine, it's just Aaron. They'd go, Aaron got you that. One of the presenters of the show went, Aaron got you this? And I went, yeah. And he went, what a dick. <laughs> 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 even the Americans said, this is an impractical car to drive around LA. Even just by their standards. We, wow, even by, well, b- before we wrap up, on the key thing, the truck went back, and Aaron, because he felt guilty, got me a Hyundai Genesis Saloon, which is this rear-wheel drive thing they only sell over there. Now, that had keyless go on it, mm. but it worked brilliantly because, and here's the thing, little rubber button on the door handle, very subtle. You just push that with your thumb as you shut the door, and that locked it, and it flashed the lights, and you knew it was locked. And then you could pull the handle again. As long as you didn't touch the rubber button a second time, the car was locked. That's oh, well that's designed. What you need, and yeah. actually, that whole car was well designed. I'll talk about it some other time, but yeah, it's a yeah, properly it's a, good Hyundai. Definitely. And when that happens, you know we're all in trouble, really. I, I want to go down the Korean Avenue in depth. That sounds filthy, doesn't it? But, uh, but I will do that in another show. Yeah. We'll do that in another show. She was Violet. I was. <laughs> he was Zog. I still am, I hope. Are you Richard? A rough approximation. And therefore I must be Gareth. You've been listening to Gareth Jones on Speed. Say bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye everybody. everybody. To send us an email, see pictures, get song lyrics, join our Facebook fan site or follow us on Twitter, go to garethjones.tv. Gareth Jones on Speed is made in London by Whizbang. Gareth Jones